the enigmatic angels mentioned in the Bible, the Ophanim. In the sacred scriptures of the Old Testament, angelic presence is mentioned 108 times. The narrative of Genesis describes episodes in which angels directly intervened in the lives of Abraham and Jacob. Similarly, in Exodus, Moses also encountered these celestial entities throughout his journey in the desert. In total, the term angels, or its singular variant, is mentioned 32 times in the Mosaic texts and the Pentateuch. These celestial beings are presented in the scriptures as the hosts of heaven. Angels are tangible entities, far from mere allegories or mythological constructs. They are spiritual entities with the ability to influence the material plane. Similar to the demonic realm, the angelic domain remains veiled. Although we cannot physically interact with them, angels have the power to affect human beings. They are beyond our reach yet they possess the power to subdue even monarchs. This preamble leads us to the most enigmatic angels mentioned in the scriptures, the Ophanim. Who are the Ophanim? The word Ophanim comes from ancient Hebrew and means wheels, with Ophan being the singular form. Although the term wheels appears in various contexts in the Old Testament, the Ophanim are especially associated with the wheels described in Ezekiel's celestial vision, which many believe to be situated in the divine throne. Who was Ezekiel? Get to know the prophet who witnessed this extraordinary vision. The prophet Ezekiel, whose name is a proclamation of faith, God is strong, God strengthens, or God can strengthen, played his prophetic role in one of the most turbulent periods in Judah's history, the Babylonian exile. This dark historical context may underscore the meaning of his name, suggesting that even in adversity, there is a divine source of strength. During the devastating campaign of Nebuchadnezzar in 597 BCE, Ezekiel was one of the 10,000 individuals taken captive from Jerusalem. He likely ministered prophetically in Babylon, more specifically among the exiles in Tel Abib, on the banks of the Kabur River. For the exiles, Ezekiel's presence and prophecies were vital. His messages offered life to those who received his words with faith, while announcing judgment to the unbelievers. His ministry was a poignant reminder that even under the severity of divine punishment, the people were not forgotten. While Jeremiah proclaimed God's word in Jerusalem, Ezekiel served as a parallel voice for the exiles in Babylon, ensuring that both groups were aware of divine purposes. The messages of both prophets were crucial and resonated with equal intensity. In the exile scenario, Ezekiel had divine visions, one of the most emblematic being that of the Ophanim. Being in foreign lands did not prevent celestial experiences from reaching him, reinforcing the message that, regardless of location or circumstance, communication with the divine remains accessible. God chose a unique moment to inaugurate Ezekiel's prophetic ministry, revealing to him a stunning vision that would mark the beginning of his journey as a divine messenger. Understanding the Ophanim, as presented in Ezekiel's vision, requires a comprehensive appreciation of the nature of this transcendental revelation. God chose to unveil the heavens before Ezekiel's mortal eyes, granting him a glimpse of the divine. The narrative describing Ezekiel's initial vision is undoubtedly one of the most complex and challenging in the Old Testament regarding its translation and interpretation. Ezekiel details the spatial and temporal context of his visionary experience in the opening verses of his book, Ezekiel 1, 1, 4. He was by the river Kebar in exile when the heavens opened up, allowing him to glimpse supernatural realities. On the precise date, the fifth day of the fourth month of the thirteenth year, while among the exiles by the river Kebar, Ezekiel experienced the unimaginable, the heavens parting and revealing divine visions. The word of the Lord manifested clearly to him, son of Buzi, 
In the land of the Chaldeans, by the mentioned river, there he felt the powerful presence of God. Watching attentively, Ezekiel witnessed a devastating storm coming from the north, an immense cloud radiating fire and brilliance, with sparkling lightning and intense brightness around it. In the heart of this storm, he glimpsed something resembling gleaming metal amidst the flames. Ezekiel struggled to describe the indescribable, resorting to metaphors and comparisons to convey what his eyes had witnessed. The expression, something like gleaming metal in the midst of the fire, is an attempt to verbalize a celestial scene of difficult explanation. The vision of a dark cloud, permeated by lightning and fire, approaching from the north, was just the prelude to a divine revelation that would forever transform his mission and message. In the heart of a radiant cloud, Ezekiel observes four luminous entities whose splendor is incomparable. Although they have a human outline, these creatures transcend humanity in their essence. Each of them is adorned with four distinct faces, that of a man, that of a lion, that of an ox, and that of an eagle. Initially, Ezekiel does not name these figures in the first chapter, where he describes his vision. However, in the 10th chapter, he identifies them as cherubim, beings that occupy a prominent place in the celestial hierarchy, as revealed in the scriptures. Ezekiel 1, 5, 7 details this vision, and in the midst of it there were figures resembling four living beings, and this was their appearance. They had the form of human beings. Each of them had four faces and four wings, their legs were straight, and their feet were like calves' feet, gleaming like the polish of bronze. Ezekiel struggles to express in earthly words what his celestial vision revealed to him, resorting to metaphors and comparisons to convey the inexpressible. Before even contemplating the ophanim, Ezekiel witnesses the cherubim, beings whom he later explicitly identifies. These cherubim, created by God, constitute a lofty order within the angelic hierarchy mentioned shortly after Adam and Eve's expulsion from paradise. We can only speculate about the awe and reverence that Adam must have felt upon seeing these majestic beings for the first time. Imagine the surprise, perhaps even a mixture of fear and admiration, that Adam must have felt upon seeing these magnificent cherubim for the first time, beings hitherto unknown to humanity. This feeling of awe is not unfamiliar to the pages of the Bible. In Exodus 25, we are transported to a moment where Moses receives meticulous divine instructions for the construction of sacred utensils that would adorn the tabernacle, among them the Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat, places of encounter and communion with the divine. Interestingly, it is over the mercy seat that God orders the placement of figures of cherubim made of pure gold. Undoubtedly, an image of immense majesty and spiritual significance symbolizing the immediate presence of God. And it is in this atmosphere of holiness and reverence that Ezekiel has his vision of the cherubim before the divine presence, beings who praise and glorify God incessantly. Contrasting with some contemporary artistic representations that portray cherubim as small, angelic, and infantilized creatures, the Bible presents them as majestic attendants of the divine throne, executing God's sovereign will. Ezekiel, in his description, offers us an image of these beings with a fascinating detail. Under their wings, on their four sides, were human hands, as for the faces and wings of the four of them, their wings touched one another, and they did not turn their faces when they moved, each went straight ahead. This description highlights the ordered and sublime nature of these creatures, each movement and aspect filled with purpose and reverence. The forms of these celestial creatures, as observed by Ezekiel, are laden with symbolism. Each being has a human face, perhaps evoking rationality and intelligence, a lion's face that could symbolize strength and majesty, 
a face of an ox representing hard work and servitude, and finally, an eagle's face, suggesting elevation and keen vision. The presence of these four faces in each creature suggests a range of divine attributes, omniscience, omnipotence, tireless service, and sovereignty. These celestial beings, endowed with wings, had the ability to move in any direction as the spirit impelled them, signifying that the divine presence knows no limits or barriers. Even in exile, Ezekiel realizes that he is not isolated. God's presence permeates all realities, offering constant and comforting companionship. The text of Ezekiel continues with a vivid description of celestial dynamics. Their wings were spread out upward. Each had two wings touching the wings of the creatures on either side and two wings covering its body. Each one went straight ahead. Wherever the spirit would go, they would go without turning as they went. Among the living creatures, something like burning coals of fire were moving back and forth. The fire was bright and lightning flashed out of the fire. The creatures sped back and forth like flashes of lightning. After this vision of the celestial beings, Ezekiel's attention turns to the wheels, comparable in complexity and mobility to a gyroscope. These wheels, capable of movement in any direction, without the need for rotation or adjustment, symbolize the omnipresence of God, able to act in all dimensions and circumstances. Ezekiel, in describing these objects, attempts to convey with human language a divine and transcendent reality, something that challenges our complete understanding. Ezekiel's narrative offers us a glimpse of the divine spectacle, a phenomenon that defies human comprehension and the capacity for expression. Ezekiel 1.15, 21 plunges us even deeper into this celestial vision, presenting an element of the vision that is both mysterious and fascinating, the wheels. Beside the living creatures was something that looked like burning coals of fire, or like torches moving back and forth among the creatures. The fire was bright, and lightning flashed out of the fire. The creatures sped back and forth like flashes of lightning. This description is a testimony to divine omnipresence and omniscience. The wheels, accompanied by eyes, not only move in harmony with the living beings, the cherubim, but also respond to the direction of the spirit, symbolizing God's comprehensive vision and knowledge. This account suggests that nothing escapes divine observation. Every movement on earth is perceived, and every decision is known. The fact that Ezekiel is capturing this vision in a context of captivity intensifies its meaning. He, along with the exiles, is being assured that despite their distant location and distressing situation, they remain under divine sight and care. God is not confined to a temple or geography. His presence and knowledge transcend all barriers. The beginning of the book of Ezekiel, marked by this supernatural vision, sets the tone for the subsequent revelations that the prophet will share. This initial vision is a strong statement of God's proximity to his people, even in the most challenging circumstances and a prelude to the messages that Ezekiel will convey on behalf of the divine. In this transcendental vision, God summons Ezekiel to assume a crucial role, to be the messenger and watchman among the Hebrew exiles. This is only the first of four visions that the book of Ezekiel details, each with its peculiar depth and significance. By narrating his first vision with such detail and vigor, Ezekiel follows the fundamental principle of clarity for effective leadership. As a pastor once stated, when there is confusion in the pulpit, uncertainty reigns in the pews. Ezekiel, aware of this, endeavors to provide clarity through analogies, employing them to shape his message and contextualize the revelations he shares. This methodology not only facilitates understanding, but also guides the practical application of these visionary insights. Divine visions, as demonstrated by Ezekiel, equip the leader and his community with guidance and purpose. In this particular vision, 
The synchronized movement of the living creatures and the wheels suggests divine harmony. Every element, however mysterious it may seem, is aligned with the spirit and will of God. The image described by Ezekiel is that of a splendid chariot, representing the throne of God, accompanied by four wheels and surrounded by living beings in constant motion. This scenario reflects God's providence, which is meticulous, infallible, and timely. The narrative conveys an idea of incessant movement and divine activity, with no hint of disorder or confusion. The wheels that move freely in any direction without losing their course symbolize God's ability to act and intervene without spatial or temporal limitations. Thus, Ezekiel offers us a glimpse of divine power and majesty, a representation that highlights the order, intention, and omnipresence of God, elements that resonate through his prophetic mission. A biblical commentator compared and commented on the movement of these entities, likening them to ball bearings capable of moving freely in any direction, without the need for specific directional mechanisms. In Ezekiel 1 28 a vision is described where, above the beings, there was something resembling a vast expanse sparkling like crystal, extending above their heads. Below this expanse, the creatures stretched out their wings towards each other, while two other wings covered their bodies. The noise of their wings in motion was comparable to the roar of rushing waters, akin to the voice of the Almighty, a sound as imposing as that of a great assembly or an army on the march. When these beings ceased their movement, they retracted their wings, and a voice was heard from above the expanse. Above this structure, Ezekiel saw something resembling a throne made of lapis lazuli, and upon this throne, a figure that had the appearance of a man. From the waist up, this figure emitted a metallic gleam, as if made of fire, and from the waist down, there was also something resembling flames, enveloped in radiant splendor. The vision was surrounded by a brilliance reminiscent of a rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, representing the magnificence of the glory of the Lord. Faced with this vision, Ezekiel prostrated himself and then heard a voice speaking. Ezekiel then attempted to express with words the ineffable celestial scene he had witnessed, and his description highlights the encounter with a heavenly throne and a divine entity that, although having the form of a man, was constituted of a flaming essence suggesting a sublime and ethereal nature. Ezekiel witnessed an incredible splendor, and before him, a rainbow encircled the throne of God, a symbol of divine covenant and power, recalling the promise made to Noah after the flood. This rainbow, observed by Ezekiel in a stormy context, stood out as a reminder of God's commitment and strength, conveying a message of his supreme power. The vision was a comfort to Ezekiel, reinforcing that God is in control and that nothing is beyond the reach of his power. This divine omnipotence teaches us that no challenge or adversity is too great for God to face. Even when we feel incapable, God has the ability to intervene. Ezekiel's reaction of prostrating himself before the divine glory is a humble and reverent response to God's majestic presence. In difficult moments, like those faced by Ezekiel, the memory of this vision served as an assurance of God's sovereign rule, even far from Jerusalem. Today, believers may feel exiled in a world marked by injustices and moral deviations, where even some churchgoers may reject biblical teachings. However, Ezekiel's account invites us to reflect on the magnificence of God, reinforcing that regardless of our location or circumstances, God is with us, omniscient and omnipotent. Although we may not see Ezekiel's exact visions, we have the certainty of God and His Holy Spirit with us, a comfort and guide in our lives. This understanding should strengthen our faith and perseverance, even in challenging times, until the moment we are with Him in eternity. 
Visualizing the scene described by Ezekiel may be challenging, but the meaning and promise it carries are clear and deeply encouraging. The classification of the Afanim as angels, although not explicitly mentioned in the canonical scriptures, stems from Jewish apocryphal texts that incorporated them into an angelic hierarchy alongside the seraphim and cherubim. This association can be attributed to the uniqueness, exceptional power, and proximity of these entities to the throne of God, as well as their unique representation, filled with eyes, symbolizing limitless divine vigilance and perception. Regardless of whether the Ophanim are considered autonomous angelic beings or mere vehicles propelled by a divine force, their primary role is to reflect the magnificence and sovereignty of God, as revealed to Ezekiel and by extension to all faithful who ponder over his visions. Through their structure and function, the Ophanim exalt God's undisputed control over the universe. The wheels moving in all directions symbolize God's ubiquity, reaffirming the belief that he is present in all places and moments, a comfort and a reminder of his constant vigilance and care. The divine spirit that guides the cherubim is the same that permeates the Ophanim, and the profusion of eyes represents divine omniscience. God sees and knows everything. Understanding the supernatural realm is crucial for Christians, as emphasized in Ephesians 6, 11, 12, as it reveals the nature of our spiritual struggle. Awareness of a spiritual world beyond what is visible prepares us to confront and resist the strategies of evil, equipped with the armor of God. This supernatural perspective is not just a matter of knowledge, it is a matter of living out and practicing faith. In the current context, where extremes prevail, there is a challenge for believers. On one hand, some may downplay the importance of the supernatural in their faith, while on the other hand, there may be those who lean excessively towards the spiritual, neglecting earthly responsibilities and realities. Balance lies in recognizing the influence of the spiritual while living pragmatically and faith-centered as guided by the scriptures. There is indeed a spectrum of perspectives within the Christian community regarding the importance and role of the supernatural in faith and daily life. On one hand, there are those who adopt a strictly naturalistic view, relying solely on doctrinal truths applied to routine, without making room for the supernatural in their faith experiences. On the other extreme, there are people so absorbed in the spiritual and mystical that they end up distancing themselves from earthly responsibilities and challenges, limiting their effectiveness and relevance in the material world. A balance, as suggested by the biblical narrative, is to recognize the reality of both worlds. The story in 2 Kings 6.16 illustrates this dynamic. When Elisha's servant was frightened by the enemies surrounding them, the prophet reassured him, revealing a more powerful and encouraging spiritual reality than the physical threat. This episode underscores the importance of being aware of the spiritual reality that surrounds us, although not visible to human eyes, significantly influencing our existence. Investigating the scriptures and seeking the divine perspective on the supernatural brings us closer to the kingdom of God and expands our understanding of reality, encompassing both the tangible and the intangible. Ezekiel, as a central figure in this context, was a precursor in articulating this vision, receiving and sharing divine revelations through symbolic and powerful imagery. Ezekiel's visions, replete with symbolism and divine instruction, demonstrate the importance of communicating God's word effectively and impactfully. He used creative and expressive methods to engage his audience and convey profound messages, establishing himself not only as a prophet, but also as an exceptional communicator. The designation Son of Man repeatedly used for Ezekiel, reinforces his humanity and his role as God's spokesperson, an intermediary between the divine and the people. 
His mission was not only to foretell future events, but also to influence the perception and spirituality of his people, challenging them to reflect on and deeply engage with divine teachings. Ezekiel reminds us of the need to uphold our values and convictions, even in the face of indifference or opposition. Ensuring that the divine message is communicated clearly, creatively, and persistently. Ezekiel readily obeyed divine instructions, even when the symbolic representations requested by God seemed peculiar or embarrassing. His energetic ministry earned respect and admiration from the leaders of Judah. However, despite Ezekiel's efforts to inspire his generation, his exhortations were heard, but did not prompt action, resulting in his frustration. As a watchman appointed by God, Ezekiel had the mission to warn of imminent dangers, urging repentance to avoid ruin. God, in his relationship with Ezekiel, positions himself as the provider of words and the director of the narrative that the prophet should convey to the people, also being the author who determines the closure of the play, symbolized by the Babylonian invasion. Regarding angels, their primary function is to fulfill the word of God, acting as executing forces of divine will. Angels, described as powerful heavenly hosts, play a vital role in carrying out divine plans, as frequently expressed in the Bible by the assertion, the Lord of hosts will accomplish it. These celestial beings, besides being agents of God in spiritual and earthly realms, rejoice in fulfilling His will, as evidenced in Psalms 103, 20, 21, reaffirming their absolute commitment to obey and execute divine orders. Ezekiel promptly obeyed divine orders, performing symbolic actions that often seemed peculiar or even humiliating. His energetic ministry garnered respect and attention, although his warnings, however vehement, did not always lead to action on the part of the people of Judah. As a watchman warning of imminent danger, Ezekiel fulfilled his role in warning the Israelites about the consequences of disobedience. God, in instructing Ezekiel, established him as a prophetic voice, not only to warn, but also to symbolize divine presence and word among the people. The arrival of the Babylonian army would be the tragic culmination for those who ignored his warnings, marking the conclusion of the play that Ezekiel presented under divine direction. In addition to the Ophanim, the Bible describes various categories of angels, including the ordinary angels, which are usually the majority mentioned in the scriptures. They contrast with more specialized classes, such as the cherubim, who guarded Eden after the human fall, and the seraphim, described in Isaiah as burning beings who praise God. Among specific angels, Michael stands out as an archangel, a leader among angels, while Gabriel is often seen as a divine messenger, bringing crucial revelations such as the prophecies in the book of Daniel. These angelic figures, each with their distinct role, illustrate the complexity and order within the spiritual realm, executing God's will and word. The relevance of angels in the Christian context is unquestionable. They not only play a crucial role in biblical narratives, interacting with central figures and participating in divine events, but also continue to play a vital role in the lives of believers today. God's constancy, as expressed in Malachi 3.6, suggests that angels, as part of His plan and purpose, remain active and relevant. Angels are mentioned throughout the Bible as messengers of God, intervening in critical moments and guardians of the faithful. The presence and angelic ministry in Jesus' life are significant. From the announcement of His birth to guidance and protection in various episodes of His life, demonstrating that even as the Son of God, He interacted with and was assisted by angels. As for contemporary Christian experience, angels continue to be a manifestation of God's care and involvement with His followers. 
They act under divine direction, executing God's will and assisting believers in often invisible and mysterious ways. Spiritual blindness can limit our perception and experience of angelic ministry. Believing in the reality and proximity of angels, as revealed in Scripture, is an essential step in recognizing and receiving their ministry in our lives. Just as there are adverse and invisible spiritual realities, the angelic realm operates on a plane that transcends our earthly understanding but is intimately involved in executing divine purpose and supporting believers. God endowed angels with superior abilities in knowledge and mobility compared to humans. They were created by God, as highlighted in Colossians 1.16, where it is stated that everything was created by Him and for Him, including all invisible entities, among them angels. Hebrews 1.14 reaffirms this notion, identifying angels as ministering spirits appointed to assist those destined for salvation. Angelic dominion encompasses the vastness of divine creation, and belief in their existence and ministry is fundamental for those who accept biblical veracity. The presence of angels permeates both the Old and New Testaments, being alluded to almost 300 times, suggesting their deep integration into God's plan and execution. Scholars and biblical texts, such as Hebrews 12.22, allude to an almost countless number of angels, emphasizing their magnitude and comprehensive presence throughout creation. David, impressed by the vastness of this heavenly reality, speaks of tens of thousands of angels, a vision that highlights their grandeur and majesty. In all their actions and manifestations, angels, including the Ophanim, direct glory exclusively to God, fulfilling their mission to convey and effectuate divine word. Despite their magnificence, the glory of angels pales in comparison to the majesty of Christ, the heavenly Lamb and Lord of glory, to whom all heavenly and earthly creation worships. In the context of Ezekiel 1, the wheels described in the prophet's vision represent aspects of divine presence and power symbolizing God's ability to be everywhere and govern all creation. This vision of a throne resembling a chariot emphasizes God's majesty and transcendent glory, which permeates and sustains the universe. The vision granted to Ezekiel, replete with cherubim, a heavenly chariot, spirit and wheels, serves to highlight perfect unity and synchrony in the divine realm. Even in the face of a vision that could be considered terrifying, the true focus is on the magnificence and splendor of God. This revelation was particularly significant during the Babylonian captivity period, serving as a poignant reminder of God's holiness and supreme power over all creation. This divine manifestation reinforces the message that, despite the adversities faced by the people of Israel, exile and imminent national destruction, God remained sovereign in control of all circumstances. This idea resonates with the teaching of Romans 8.28, which assures believers that in all situations, God is working for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. The central themes that permeate the book of Ezekiel emphasize God's sovereignty and providential control over history and world events. Regardless of the challenges or the faithlessness of the people of Israel, the divine plan will not be thwarted, revealing a God who, while allowing free will, follows an unalterable purpose faithfully executed. Ezekiel's initial vision, only the first of four that he records, establishes a recurring pattern in the book. The affirmation of divine governance over all creation, a theme that unfolds and is reiterated in different contexts and narratives throughout the text, reinforcing the image of a God timelessly present and eternally sovereign. Do not miss the opportunity to transform your understanding and strengthen your faith. Be with us in every revelation and inspiration. Follow our channel, activate notifications, like, comment, 
and share our videos. Join us in the continuous exploration of divine mysteries and in the discovery of how these eternal truths can illuminate our daily path. Until the next video, God bless.